I've been doing the Stones uh, tribute thing for a little bit, with a little bit of varying success for each member, and uh, we just decided after talking with each other and getting together for a few rehearsals that everybody was willing to, uh, you know, put enough time into it to do it the right way, and you know, everybody was uh, hard working, and it just seemed like it made sense to put it together. Yeah, if you're gonna do it, you, you gotta do it right, and I think we do it. Uh... Pretty close to right. I mean, it's a, it's a work in progress. I mean, it's always going to be, you never, if we got it perfect, we'd be the Stones, right? But I always say to him, I said, people aren't coming to see Mike Rubino or Bernie play guitar. They want to see Keith, you know, they want to stand there and compare. And the closer you can get to what they're doing, and people walk out and go, that was great, man. When somebody comes up to me and says, you know, hey, man, that sympathy leave was from Yaya's. That was awesome. I said, well, I take real, you know, pride in that because, you know, I worked on it. <laughs> I love the sound of a Telecaster for the Stones cover band I'm in called the Mike Hunt Band. Uh, but Keith Richards played Gibson a lot too, so... We didn't really know each other when we were younger, but I'm sure he felt the same way I did when you would go see a Stones band, a cover band do a Stones song, you were always disappointed because they didn't, they didn't I mean, have I've the right... I've been in mom's room for like 10 years and that's wrong! <laughs> You take homebridge with that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. you know? Lost a lot of dates learning how to play an open G. I never realized how ridiculous that sounds until now. <laughs> He's my number one guitar player. I love the very most. So, uh, <laughs> due to tuning issues, we decided we, had to we needed out. another tally. We had to go out and buy Cinco. Yeah, Cinco. About we a call year him Cinco because he's a Mexican teller. Yeah, he's Mexican. He's a five-string. Fi five-string Mexican, Cinco. <laughs> yeah, but we I've shared the stage with the Stones. The Stones was the connection for me because my mother had Muddy Water records. She had all these blues records. And the stuff that the Stones were playing on the Ed Sullivan show and on the Dean Martin show, Little Red Rooster and stuff like that, was what I was spinning for my mother at those parties, you know. So I said, that's when I said, wow, you know, I know that song, you know. And then when I got the magazines and I saw the Stones and they looked crazy, like, you know, I said, that's what I want to do. And then I said, I, I got to get a band. I gave Keith a guitar that a friend of mine, his name is James Trussart, and he makes these really, really cool individual, uh, you know, metal guitars. And I have a really unique Trussart myself. And, uh, you know, James asked me to give uh, this guitar to Keith. So I went to, you know, to Scandinavia, this beautiful telly with uh, all the skull carvings and knobs and everything. It's like, done up for him, you know? When you do lead guitar stuff in Keith, uh, you know, you get away with a lot. You know, bum notes are encouraged and, uh, you know, but the attitude comes with the part. Yeah, we, we were playing in Finland and uh, I presented Keith this guitar. So we talked for a bit and I asked him how he held up, you know. And I was, you know, complaining about some tendonitis that I was experiencing from some overplaying. And uh, he said something to the effect like, well, uh, every morning when I get up, mate, I hurt. <laughs> Everything hurts, right? But the day that stops hurting, then I'm dead, aren't I? <laughs> a goal would be for Keith to come down sometime and see and see the hunt play. Personal goal, so I want to keep working. Just I want to get better and better on guitar. We have, you know, some mutual friends that work with them, and um, we had a guitar here that uh, they thought Keith would like. So I brought it down to the, their studio and uh, 
left it there for Keith to try out, and he ended up really liking it and using it heavily, extensively on their Japanese tour. It's the white, that white 345. And consequently, he you know also bought like a backup for his 0021 and a couple other things. And I have fun with it, and I try to put myself in his kind of persona when I'm up there. But you know, when the show's over, I'm just me again, you know. But you know, if, if there's a ton of people down in front, and if, you know, and you hit that first chord and walk out on stage, and you can see lock eyes with them, and although generally I look over the crowd, but uh, you know, you, you make eye contact with people, and then people come up to you at the end of the show and really say <clears throat> how much they appreciate what you've done, and you know, it's rewarding, you know. But the, then again, I just like to grab a beer and be one of them at the end. <laughs> When the Stones came out, we saw them, I remember, the, I think the first time we saw them was on the Hollywood Palace or something like that. And I looked at my brother and I said, you got to play harmonica. And he got himself a harmonica. Now, he may have a different rendering of that story. My anecdote about the Keith Richards thing, if you want, is that how I think was interesting, how we had it for like six months and people, our local guys were like, oh, whatever, oh, like yeah, 345. And then the coolest guy in the world buys it, and now the thing's probably worth so much more if we got it back. And when we had it, we loved it so much because it was basically like that, this guitar, this model, sort of, in white, which is, you know, extremely rare. And, you know, all the locals were kind of like, we were like, oh, check out the new thing, and they, they kind of weren't like that. They were like, oh, whatever. And then the coolest guy in the world buys it. And that says a lot to us sometimes, you know? But... You can tell that over. <laughs> we have a great time in the dressing room. Uh, a a pre-gig ritual with me and Keith is always kind of yelling, like saying to each other, "You wear makeup," you know, right before we go on. It's kind of a, you know, and I'll joke about his his outfits that he's wearing that night, you know. <laughs> the, the Stones are everything you try to be. Uh, they are just so good. You want to listen to it over and over and over. You're standing on stage and you're looking at the set list that she's not following, <laughs> but then when you see a Stones song on it. You're like, oh, cool, we can play that. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, I'm like... And it's timeless. It's one of those things, I mean, I hate to say it, there's a few songs that you, have, that you play as a musician from the time, and you're like, oh, God, we have to play that song again. I never feel that way when we have to cover a song song. I'm always excited to play it. Happy it's to always play it. fresh. There's always a moment musically that happens. Um, we were really influenced by the Stones. We, we really, uh, that really got us going as a band. You know, um, something about the Stones seem more achievable. Just recorded Wild Horses. Nice version of it, if I don't say so myself. Nice. You did do a beautiful production on that, Mr. Blood. Um, we play that song a lot at our private events for like a cocktail hour and always get a response to it. And that was actually the first cover we recorded in five albums of original music. It's the only cover that we've ever recorded and put on an album. One other thing you were saying about attitude that I do, if this is really goofy, I'll tell you a secret. You can record this too. It's practicing Keith moves. <laughs> and the squat. <laughs> doing the squat, doing stuff like that, and playing. And that really can get you, when you're playing a song, you just, that's what can just really put you into the, the mood that you're rocking out. Keith has the greatest moves of anyone on earth. Picture of Keith Richards on stage with a cigarette in his mouth and the guitar in his hands, and you know, just beating the piss out of the thing to get the sound out of it. I don't think anybody can argue that's a definition of cool. I think I started smoking because Keith smoked. <laughs>
of the only love I ever had Maybe I would Oh, but I love